Hear that fan? Shh. That's just gonna add to the mojo. This video is all about adding mojo to your recordings if you don't have a tape machine. I'm just gonna record stuff, let you watch what I'm doing, and then you can decide if you like these sounds, if you like the ingredients to what I made, and if you wanna put that in your music or not. Let's talk about drum sounds. A lot of the cool chill hop drum kits that I hear have a very small sounding kick. Unfortunately, I have the most massive kick in the world. I just changed heads on it, but yeah, it still, it sounds too big. This is the most extravagant purchase I've ever made in my life. I bought these like super nice expensive bongos and I've used them like five times. They sound so good. Hello, bongo man with the bongo plant. I actually don't even know if the big bongo is supposed to be on the right or the left. I'm trying to get a vintage -y sound, so that's why I'm using the SM57 because it sounds instantly vintage -y to me. Crappy. I love the SM57. I just start mixing from the get go. Uh, compression is going to bring out character. So I've already started mixing. I'm just compressing the hell out of these. I don't really care too much. I just want to like turn knobs, like Tom Morello says. He's just like, turn all the knobs up. Don't be all subtle. I think that's really good advice. I never really do that. Oh, gotta use this bad boy. Freaking xylophone. Holy crap. Look at that. All right, I'll do the bass and then I'll do that. Woo! I feel like I've discovered something that nobody talks about. If you take any guitar and plug it into a really, really small speakered guitar amp. It's like a super cool sound. I've been doing it a lot lately. The Dan Electro Honeytone, it's a $25 amp. It's a little toy, and I think it sounds wicked, especially with a hollow body or semi-hollow body guitar. I have a video about this Gorilla amp. I'll, I'll link to it up here. Nobody wants this amp, but I think it sounds cool. I don't want to like AV sounds and stuff. All of the problems are going to add the character to my recording, so I don't want to fight them. I just want to record. I think I got the rhythm guitar part figured out. Oh, seven minutes left. I had until noon to make this. Look at this. On the dot. It's noon. I had one whole idea and I just scrapped it. That took like 20 minutes of my time and just, I don't know. I guess for me the message is don't get addicted to your ideas. Like I didn't try to force it because it just wasn't very good. So I just abandoned it. I'm not saying this is great, but it was better than my first idea. Now it's all about the mixing. So I'll work on trying to vintageize it, mojoize it, lo fi -size it. That's that. I've been spending so long on this video trying to explain how to make digital stuff sound analog, and it's such an obvious point, but the reason why I've spent so long on this is because there is nothing that makes digital sound like analog. You can do weird approximations, but nothing captures the randomness, the tapiness, the real tape vibe. The fastest possible way to get an analog sound in your recording is just to do it in the box and then send it out to a cheap cassette tape at the end. In fact, there's a video, I'll link to it here. That that song is dripping with analog vibe. All we did is recorded it in the box and then sent it out to a crappy old tape at the end. It's the fastest possible way to get an analog sound. So that's my number one recommendation before anything else. If that's not possible and you want to use plugins, I'm gonna explain how to do that and get other sounds, but it's not in my opinion, it'll never capture actual analog tape. If you're getting value out of these videos, please hit the like button and please subscribe. It really helps me out when you do that. The most important thing to get like the analog sound is a matter of compressing and EQing and grouping, right? You've probably heard people say that stages of saturation help as well. The main idea is take all your drum tracks and you group them to one place and then you do something to that group. That's going to do a lot to gel your sound together. I got two versions of this track. I'll show you the first one first. Show you how to produce analog sounding recordings using only free plugins. What I got going on here is grouping and then a little bit of side chaining. I normally wouldn't use this many plugins. This is kind of overkill. I just want to show you because this is this is what we got going on with the kick and the snare. So 
the first thing is this. When I record to my 388, when I record to tape, the tone of the snare changes a lot. So let's just first talk about that. So I normally roll off a touch of lows, which I've tried to emulate here. And there's also a touch of super high end loss. Roll that off just a tiny touch. And then analog obsession plugin, which is free. What is this like a tube channel strip? I don't care. It, this out of all the different plugins I tried, this one sounds the most like tape distortion to me. So this is the one I went with. The next thing was I wanted to bring it up a little bit. So I think this is the compressor. Then what I'm doing is I'm side chaining the kick slightly against the snare. I believe that the kick, the whole mix squishes a little bit when the kick engages or any very low sound engages. That's my insane belief. So I think you get closer by doing a little bit of that. This version of the song, I think, is a lot more mojo-ish. There's way more chopping going on, but it's more sampley sounding, so it has more vibe, in my opinion, basically because of the music. But there's a couple of things I did that were different. I felt that grouping uh, the drums and sending them to this tape cassette plugin, it just put a blanket over it, and, and I just didn't love the sound of this group like that. Bit of a blanket. So then sending it to this Brit Pre offers a little bit of drive, a little bit of cohesion, a little bit of glue, right? So instead of what I did, at the very end, I applied this Isotope Vinyl plugin, which is just a dope plugin. Just slap this onto the end of your mix and it'll give it mojo. <laughs> So the only problem with this plugin is that it does kill a little bit of your high end. So I love this plugin too, this Analog Obsession Combox EQ. And originally when this was off, I only was pushing the mids forward and I, I lowered the, the low end just a touch. My other version was just straight takes. You'll see how edited up this is, but that actually made it sound a lot more contemporary. Like it's a sample. I'm basically sampling myself on this track. This effect is just a cool effect. Whether it sounds like tape or not, I don't care. A lot of the white noise is being generated by these different tape plugins. I have one on the bongo, and this is a little secret about bongos. They sound really um, kind of boring without any crap on them. I'll show you what it sounds like playing. But you can distort the hell out of bongos, and they sound really cool. So if we just solo this, Everything on this track was recorded through that cheap little Gorilla amp. Listen to the bass solo, just through that cheap little amp.
that's bass recorded through like a five inch speaker. That crappy sound, it just adds your identity to your recording. So don't be afraid of things like that, I think. <laughs> One cool thing about the uh, Isotope plugin also is that you can just press the mono button. So make sure you check your mix in mono also. Oh, the glockenspiel. I don't think I'm doing anything. Just a little bit of compression and a lot of low cut. So I'm not afraid to cut away the pieces I'm not using. Anyways, that's part of the secret sauce. Thanks for watching.